Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to the last of our CIM New Brunswick branches five part virtual event series on an emerging gold district in southwest New Brunswick. Today's presenter will give a presentation on the Fundy Gold Project, an overlooked regional fault package in the southern New Brunswick with huge potential and early success. My name is Tom Healy. I'm the chair of the New Brunswick branch of the CIM. Holly is away today, and so I'll be your moderator for the day. Thank you for joining us. Some housekeeping before we start, if I can change screens here. If you joined with the computer audio, please make sure you selected the computer audio button on your control panel. And if you have a question, uh, please type your question into the chat box in the media controls um, or later on if you can raise your hand uh, to be unmuted, just use the raise your hand button. Uh, today, today we'd like to introduce you to uh, Charlie Coders. Um, Charlie, uh, you can read his bio right there. He's been a, a professional geo for 12 odd years and is currently the exploration manager for Cisco Metals. Um, on the Fundy Gold project. Um, so Charlie, if uh, I can stop sharing here, welcome to the presentation today and go for it. Yeah, thank, thanks a lot, Tom. Um, let me just pull up my screen here. Everyone can see my screen. I can. Okay, well, thanks again. Um, thanks, Tom, for the intro. And thanks to um, CIM New Brunswick for putting this on. Um, so uh, we'll get into it. So today we're going to get into um, Brunswick Explorations um, Fundy Gold Project. There will be some forward looking statements regarding some of the technical information within the presentation today. So Brunswick Exploration is active across Eastern Canada from grassroots through to resource development in both uh, precious and base metals. And at Fundy Gold in New Brunswick, we have our gold polymetallic orogenic uh, play. It's a new um, regional highly prospective gold play in Southern New Brunswick along regional deep rooted fault package, which we're calling the Fundy Shear Zone, which is part of the Appalachian trend. We have new high grade polymetallic discoveries which point to untapped potential along 45 kilometers of strike length. And some of these discoveries are of course, uh, multi-ounce. Um, we also have an option agreement with Osisco Metals in the Bathurst Mining Camp in Northern New Brunswick, which is a zinc lead silver VMS play. And it's on the Eastern half of the camp along the prolific Brunswick belt, um, which includes also the Canacon base metal deposit. We also in Quebec have some grassroots exploration, uh, namely Lac Edouard, which is a new um, acquisition in the nickel space. It's highly prospective and it's open to depth and a long strike. So who is Brunswick Exploration? Well, Brunswick Exploration is part of a larger group of companies. It's housed within what we call the Osisco Group or Osisco Family. If you've heard of the Osiscos, um, some other ones you may have heard of are Osisco Metals, Osisco Gold Royalties, Osisco Development, uh, Osisco Green, Osisco Mining, Falco, um, all of these companies are within that group. Um, and with Brunswick, our chairman and CEO is Robert Wares, who was the, uh, one of the original founders of the very first Osisco, um, which found the Malarctic Pit. Um, the company is also um, led by Killian Charles, uh, who's the president, Anthony Glavick, who's the CFO, and uh, myself. Uh, our companies explore in the Northwest Territories, British Columbia, Ontario, Quebec, and New Brunswick. And we do explore for minerals such as gold, silver, copper, zinc, lead, niobium, and diamonds. And in case there was any confusion, um, I do work for both Brunswick Exploration and Osisco Metals. So our corporate office uh, for Brunswick Exploration is with the rest of the group in Montreal. And as I mentioned earlier, we have a new acquisition here, uh, Lac Edouard, which is near La Touque, which is about an hour or two north of Trois-Rivières. We also have our uh, 
VMS play uh, Wakanichi, which is near Shibugamu in northern Quebec. Uh, we talked a little bit about the Bathurst mining camp in northern New Brunswick. And today, the main focus is going to be Fundy Gold in southwestern New Brunswick. So we're looking to unlock the gold potential of southern New Brunswick, and we're really excited to be part of this, this story. Um, historically, you know, when people think or talk about New Brunswick, they think about base metals, you know, because of the success of Brunswick number 12 and number six, or they think about potash, um, you know, in Sussex area, about an hour east of St. John. But we're here to be part of the story to show just how much potential there is in New Brunswick. And Galway Metals is really leading this charge right now, and they've had substantial new discoveries at the Clarence Stream deposit. Uh, basically, there's been gold in soil and prospecting anomalies, which continue to outline new gold discoveries there. And uh, as we've mentioned, Southern New Brunswick is a highly prospective area for gold exploration. And historically, it's been ignored for exploration relative to other gold camps, such as Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, and the Carolinas. Um, you know, New Brunswick's in between all of these camps, but it has the exact same rock types. You know, if you look to the west over to the Carolinas, you have Oceana Gold's Hail. You have the past producing Brewer mine in Nova Scotia. You have a Tukoy um, pit that's uh, St. Barbara is operating. Um, Anaconda just put out a nice PEA on Goldboro. If you go east in Newfoundland, um, Newfound Gold's been doing a really good job with their exploration. They brought a lot more attention to um, Newfoundland, but you know we can't forget about Maritime's Hammer Down or Valentine Lake through Marathon Gold. And, the, and of course, uh, this trend does continue um, past Newfoundland um, into Ireland. You can think of Dalradian and it even continues forward until uh, into Scandinavia. But the big takeaway is that, you know, we have multi ounce, a million ounce um, camps to the east and west of New Brunswick. There's no reason why you can't have that in New Brunswick. It's just been overlooked. And I think categorized as more of a base metals or potash place when we're, we're hoping to change the narrative here. So uh, the Funny Gold Project is a new exploration idea in an industry starved of large scale opportunities. It's a new highly prospective property along this regional, we're gonna say deep rooted Appalachian fault package, which we've called the Fundy Shear Zone. And previous exploration has largely been confined to coastal areas and there's been limited exploration outside of select areas. Uh, we've had new gold discoveries uh, both in 2020 and 2021 and this really underpins our new vision for Southern New Brunswick. So um, continuing on with what I was mentioning earlier about these, these camps to the east and west of New Brunswick, um, we wanna show you just how perspective it is and how similar the rock types are. So this is truly uh, the Maritimes you're looking at and all of these little uh, gold diamonds, our gold deposits are showing so that you can see throughout here the Maritimes. And um, the important thing to note is, again, the similar rock types, the similar colors you can see in Newfoundland going through to Nova Scotia and into New Brunswick. And um, I'm going to give you just a little bit of a breakdown on what the Appalachians are all about. It's tectonically very complex. Um, there's a number of orogenies that have occurred to get to where we are now. Um, geographically speaking, we have up here Quebec and uh, the Gaspé Peninsula. You have New Brunswick, PEI, Nova Scotia, Cape Breton Island, and then into Newfoundland. And um, all of these colors make up different realms. Um, and basically, you know, through time, a lot of these realms were separate. They've come together and accreted and uh, collided with one another to get what we have now. Um, there was formerly a number of arcs and back arc basins. Uh, you can think of the um, Penobscot, the Kingston, as well as the Popologan Arcs um, that used to um, be here, uh, as well as some of these back arc basins, such as the Tedagouche Exploits, which hosts our VMS properties here and over in the, uh, the Buckins area, and as well as the Mascarene, which hosts some of Clarence Stream deposits. So if you can envision a lot of these arc systems and back arc systems, you're also going to have a lot of oceans and seaways. So things like the Iapetus Ocean, the Rheic Ocean, the Acadian Seaway, all of these things have closed off and accreted together to get what we are now. Um, overall, what you're looking at here is about five major orogenies. Uh, I put them down here for you, the Penobscot, Taconic, Salinic, Acadian, and Neo-Acadian. 
And these orogenies have occurred basically from the ore division going into the Carboniferous and into the, uh, the Pennsylvanian. So what you're looking at here is basically the Maguma train in Nova Scotia is this gray. You have Avalonia here in green, you have Ganderia here in yellow, and Laurentia here in this gray, um, as well as this purple unit. This purple unit is dashwood, which is, which is a train as opposed to let's call it a realm, let's say. So again, just envision all these things being separate, all of these arcs and seaways closing, accreting with one another. And here we have basically this play where you've had multiple orogenies occurring. You probably have reactivation of these faults and these orogenies um, multiple times, uh, which is why we see so much gold um, in and around the Maritimes. Um, on top of that, you also have these red blobs, which are late Devonian granites, um, which I'm sure are basically um, could be part of the picture as adding a heat source um, to a lot of these deposits as well. So in terms of the Fundy Gold project, again, we're located on near the Fundy Coast just south of this blob here, which is called the St. George Batholith. So we're going to zoom into that now. So this here is the St. George Batholith that we looked at previously, this big pink blob. And it's made up of a number of different pulses, all Devonian whether it's Macadavid, uh, Jake Lee, or the Wellsford Granite, there's a number of them in here. And our property is down here, outlined here in white, as well as up here, and in that light, that sort of that, that gray shading color. So what you're looking at is about 50,000 hectares of land, um, which is quite huge. Um, you know, just the strike length here alone is around 45 kilometers. And it's important to note that we're in close proximity to the city of St. John. Um, it's about 15 minutes to get to the eastern portion of our claims. Um, looking at other communities, there's Grand Bay Westfield, Blacks Harbor, St. John, and St. Andrews. Right around here is the border with Maine. And of course, the blue is the um, Bay of Fundy. And this large river is the St. John River that continues up to Fredericton. Um, Looking a bit at the, the deposits in the area before we get into our claims, there's Clarence Stream, which is Galway, and uh, they're sitting at around 660,000 ounces uh, measured, indicated, and inferred um, just up here on the north side of the St. George Batholith. If we you know, move over here, just off the page, uh, we'll see Magna Terra's um, Cape uh, Spencer um, play. Um, you know, along the uh, Millican Lake Fault, and they're sitting at around 150,000 ounces inferred. And if we continue along the Taylor Brook Fault, you'll go up on the Annandale Belt, and you'll see Globex's Devil's Pike, and Devil's Pike is about 60,000 um, ounces inferred. So if we just sit back again and, and look at the story here, and, and, and what's going on is you have these large tectonics, we have um, multi-million ounce camps to the east and west of us and even within the camp scale level we'll call this the camp scale level we already have um, you know um, lots of ounces in the ground not to mention the historical showings and our new showings within our claims as well so um, the big takeaway from this slide is also all of these dashed lines which are our major faults that bound uh, many of these terrains. So we started with these large realms, um, such as Gander and Avalonia. And in fact, if we had to put our finger on the contact somewhere, we'd put it here in the Caledonia Cloverhill Fault. Um, you would say over here is Avalonia and here's Ganderia. It's not exactly black and white, but if we had to put it somewhere, that's where we'd put it. So um, these realms are then broken down into what you're seeing here, which are called terrains. And um, going through them, they're anywhere from Neoproterozoic to Silurian. And here we've got the Caledonia terrain, um, and then getting into the Brookville, um, which is the first of our claims. Um, both are Neoproterozoic. We then get into the Kingston Silurian terrain, which is a, a four arc setting, let's say, to the, the back arc basin of the mass green. Both um, the green and yellow are Silurian for the most part. And the orange here is the New River group, which is Neoproterozoic. Um, again, you'll note that Clarence Stream is hosted within these mass green sediments in close proximity to the Sawyer, uh, Sawyer Brook Fault. Um, and just to the north, you have the St. Croix uh, terrain. Um, the other thing I want to point out is you'll see these hashed sections here. The northern hash is our seven mile lake Milanite. 
which is about 18 kilometers long by about half a kilometer wide. You'll also see the Pokalogan metamorphic suite, which is also myelinitic, and that's about uh, 25 kilometers long by a kilometer wide. So the big takeaway here is again, looking at the large scale and shrinking it down, we have a lot of structure. We have a lot of train bounding faults, uh, myelinite. We have all the ingredients here for some good orogenic plays. And of course, we've already proved that there is gold um, both around our, our claims and in our claims. And I'm not gonna get into it, but again, keep in mind, these are just trains. So these trains are broken down further into different lithologies. Um, such as, um, you know, felsix, mafix, sediments, and so on. So um, we're going to continue on from here, um, thinking about the importance of structure here with orogenic systems. And this here is MAG through just the southern part of the claims. And what you're looking at is a, a reprocessing of three different MAG surveys that were completed. One was by Naranda in the late 80s, and, uh, and one by the GSC and Government of New Brunswick in the late 2000s. So we've compiled them all together. And what you're seeing is what we're calling residual mag. And residual mag is basically like a total field minus the background. So we've removed the lower frequency. And the big thing to note are these long linear magnetic trends. And a lot of these trends are demarcating are very close to these terrain boundaries. Um, some of these are probably mafic units or dikes. We don't know what they all are um, just yet, but at the end of the day, you can tell there's no lack of structure and that these are demarcating these major train boundaries. Here would be the back bay fault coming off of Magnetera's Love Hawkins play. You have here the Belle Isle fault, um, as well as the Kennebecasis fault. And something else to think about when you're dealing with these environments is not just the, the obvious train faults, but what's going to happen in between. Um, you can see even some splaying here, but the um, I would expect to see lots of Riddell shearing linking structures and echelon stepping in between these major fault corridors. So it's not necessarily just on those faults, but within the um, fault corridors is where you could find a lot of the deposits. And, and you see that even at Galway, it's not right on the Sawyer Brook. Um, it's, it's just south of it or just north of it. So keep, keep that in mind as well. Um, one of the best things about this project is the infrastructure that we have is fantastic. Again, um, we're about 15 minutes from the city of St. John. St. John's ballpark around 50,000 people. It has an airport, it has a deep water um, port as well. And um, if people are new to New Brunswick, um, keep in mind, you know, the population of New Brunswick is about 750,000 people. It, it, it isn't uh, very heavily populated at all. So once you get away from these city centers and you can see that very clearly here, uh, you're basically looking at wooded areas and bush. Um, but that being said, we're very lucky that we have some great infrastructure on our project. For example, this is Highway 1, and it transects the entire property, um, as well as all of the other supporting roads and bush roads, which have been fantastic uh, to get lots of good cuts on these, these rock types. You'll also notice all these white, um, these pale white areas. And a lot of these are historical aggregate pits or quarries, um, which have been, again, another great um, amenity that we've had with this project. Um, and keep in mind that in terms of where people are living, most people are, are hanging out around the coast or they're very close or right on these roads. Once you get away from these roads or the coast, there, there's really nothing but, um, but bush, essentially. This is, a bag, uh, uh, this is looking again at our infrastructure. Um, just to show you the type of quarries, they're not little pits, they're pretty legitimate. Both of these ones you're looking at are historical, they're, they're not active in any way. Um, this pit here on the left is the Lindy Lake pit where we just made a recent high grade copper discovery. And over here on the western portion of our claims, you have the um, St. George pit um, going through the mass green sediments, um, part of the back bay fault system. And you can see this large oxidized boulder here would have come from uh, this pit. Further to that, as I mentioned, um, we have tens of kilometers of road cuts. This is Highway 1. I'm looking at the Pocologan Metamorphic Suite. Uh, note the trucks down here. So we're getting some great exposures here um, of the rocks. We're learning a lot. We're sampling a lot. And um, it's, it's been a really, um, really great um, amenity to have. And you can kind of see here too, and this is sort of um, getting into the next few slides, you'll note that there's not a lot of overburden here too, which is also fantastic. So we're getting lots of bedrock and exposure outside of these roads, 
but it's also really good for geochem because you know that you're really close to the source. Overall, I would um, estimate the overburden to be um, anywhere from um, basically half a foot to one meter tops um, throughout the whole property. So, so in terms of our 2021 exploration program, we've uh, kick-started a large regional till program um, back in May. And we've also been prospecting across this 50,000 hectare land package. We've done some targeted prospecting on our 2020 and 2021 discoveries. And that's also included following up on our 2020 Rogers Lake Golden Souls grid. And of course, we have lots of assays uh, pending right now. So this is now a zoom in to our southern claims. And I again would like to just highlight just the size of our land package. Um, if, if you look at just this area down here, this would be akin to staking the entire Cadillac fault system in the Abitibi from Malarctic to Baldor. Um, again, note how many major um, fault, basically train bounding faults we have, whether it's the St. George Fault, Back Bay, Latang Harbor going into the Belle Isle, Kennebecasis, the Spruce Lake shear zone or the Caledonia Clover Hill. Um, there's no lack of faults and keeping in mind there's most likely Riddell shears and linking structures between these fault corridors. Um, the other thing we'll point out are all these X's and these X's are historical showings and again you'll, you're noticing that most of it's at the coast. Uh, not a lot of work's been done inland. There's not many reports. Um, academia has come through because um, of how complicated the um, the tectonics have been, which has been fantastic, but in terms of exploration, there just has not been a lot done here. Um, you'll also see in black our 2020 uh, Rogers Lake soils grid, which we'll get into later. We also have um, some of our 2020 discoveries, La Pro, Shadow Lake, and Menzies Lake, and our new Lindy Lake showing here in that pit you previously saw. Um, so um, we'll, we'll move on here. I'm going to go through some of these discoveries just to show you what kind of numbers we're getting. And remember, think of that big picture of being in New Brunswick to the you know, east and west, we've got multi-million ounce camps, you know, bringing it down. We've got Clarence Stream, we've got Devil's Pike, Cape Spencer, and already very quickly, we're getting gold on our property. So here at Little La Pro, we've got 67 grams gold, 17 grams silver and 0.6% copper, 26 grams gold, seven grams silver and 0.42% copper. We also have angular, angular float in close proximity to the above, which is grading about 0.35 grams gold, 1500 grams silver, 7.61% um, copper, 5.2% uh, antimony and about 1.2% zinc. And this is hosted in Cambrian Talbot Road, uh, Granodiorite. Uh, next on the list is Menzies Lake, which is another high grade gold discovery. Um, this is 70 grams gold, uh, 20 grams silver, and 2,830 ppm copper, and it's hosted in Neoproterozoic Ludgate Lake Granodiorite. Uh, next up is Shadow Lake, and this is right along Highway 1, about 15 minutes from St. John. You can see a geologist here for scale, just how large these outcrops are on the highway. And we're getting uh, 939 grams silver. 0.52 gold and 3.37% copper, uh, 309 grams silver, 2.2 grams gold and 1.2% copper, and 112 grams silver, 0.08 grams gold and 2.27% copper, hosted in another uh, Cambrian granodiorite, uh, being the Perch Lake. This is our newest discovery this year, and this is uh, Lindy Lake in that pit we first looked at, and you're getting some high grade copper that's associated with quartz carbonate veinings uh, and as well as uh, felsic diking within a Cambrian um, granodiorite. You're getting 12% copper, 0.3 grams gold, 63 grams silver, 8.8% copper, 0.43 grams gold, and 70.7 .7 grams silver. 1% uh, copper, another half a gram gold, and 290 grams silver. Um, so again, you can see there's no doubt that there's definitely um, gold, silver, and copper in the system. And, and leading into it, um, again, uh, talking about just how thin our overburden is, it's a perfect place for uh, geochemistry. And what you're seeing here is actually Galway metals. Um, we wanna show you how successful the Galway has been with geochemistry in their property. So here's the Sawyer Brook Fault, which is a major train boundary. 
and you have the mass green sediments down here and the St. Croix here to the north. And the heat map you're seeing are government tills that were done. And the government tills were done at two kilometer spacing. You can see the numbers here in PPP gold. And what Galway's done is basically is gone and they've slapped soils on top of these government tills. And then they've drilled these soils and they're making discoveries drilling soils. Lots of times it's associated with a magnetic low, um, sometimes in the vicinity of these uh, Devonian intrusions or gabbros. Um, but at the end of the day, um, they've been extremely successful with geochemistry. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to do a similar thing. It just makes sense. So um, looking at that and keeping in mind that Galway had two kilometer tills, we're going to be doing half a kilometer tills throughout our whole property. And we started this initiative back in May, and we should be wrapping up here in the coming weeks. And basically, it was a pretty, um, pretty impressive program. It had a thousand sites um, that we've put in here that are basically on favorable till horizons. These gaps that you're seeing are attributed to areas that have been mapped as glacial fluvial or glacial lacustrian sediments. So we want to make sure we're getting sources that are derived from um, the base of a glacier, so being good basal till. So that's why you're seeing those gaps. But as you can imagine, the success of Galway at two kilometer tills, and we're not doing half a kilometer, we should have a really good picture here in the coming weeks as results start to come in. And of course, the next steps would be to put soils grids uh, on top of these uh, as well. Um, Rogers Lake, um, this is our fall 2020 uh, grid that we put down, which was a, a you know, great success. Uh, what you can see overall is that it's basically open in all directions. Uh, the grid was five kilometers long by about a kilometer wide, and it was constrained to the seven mile Lake Milanite. And you can see we had 121 samples returning over 10 PPB gold and up to 16.2 grams uh, gold, which is pretty impressive. Um, looking at the geology um, down here in this corner, we have the Pocologan Metamorphic Suite. Um, getting into these Silurian West Branch uh, Reservoir Granite, this Belle Isle Fault is a major terrain bounding fault. Uh, we then start to get into the Neoproterozoic rocks of the New River Group that being the Ragged Falls granite, but you do have this myelinate in here. It's very difficult to determine the protolith. A lot of it's uh, granitic, some of it looks to be sedimentary, but it's, it's just too difficult to tell what it is. That being said, um, it's, it's an impressive grid with the amount of anomalies we've had. Um, if you look at the, the white, um, small white circles, that's what we put down as zero to two um, PPB, so being essentially you know, pretty, pretty quiet. But in the light gray circles from two to 10 PPB, we're going, there's some noise here. There's a lot of background going on here in the grid. Um, from 10 to 25 PPB, we had 80 different anomalous soils. And in the red circles is 25 to 50 PPB gold. We had about 16. And again, the magenta is 50 to 16.2 um, or 16,200 PPB um, gold. We had about 25 of those. And even though there seems to be a, a large pattern here, remember it's, it's geologically constrained already, but there are a few um, definitely trends, even if you zoom in. These, these soils are at 25 meter spacing, lines are at 100. So as an example, look in this area here where you have multiple inline anomalies and multiple line to nine and line to line anomalies through here. So we're really excited. We've been prospecting through here. Um, you know, we're hoping to follow up with some trenching and channel sampling here. Um, so um, once results come in, we're looking forward to them. So at Fundy Gold, again, um, we've had a lot of new discoveries. We've had an impressive gold and soils anomalies. We've been doing significant prospecting across our huge 50,000 hectare land package and been identifying new areas of interest. There has been prospecting across high priority targets at Rogers Lake and Lindy Lake. And we're planning on doing some drilling and some trenching in a Q4 of this year. So um, thanks, and what I wanna end off on is just showing you again the, the property. Um, again, keeping in mind we're close to St. John. This, uh, we're right uh, sort of in between Penfield and New River area. This is looking um, Northwest towards, let's say Clarence Stream. This here is the St. George Batholith. And here looking South from where I'm standing, taking this picture in the fall, you can see through all these trees and you can see uh, the beautiful uh, Fundy Bay through here. And the point here is just to show that um, there's lots of um, 
uh, wooded areas and lots of bush to do work. Um, there's not a lot of people on most of the claims. So uh, there's lots of room to do what we need to do. So uh, thanks again for your time. Thanks to CIM for putting this on. Thanks, Charlie. That was a great presentation. Um, I'm not sure if I'm unmuted. I think I am. Uh, now we're ready for some Q&A. Uh, I noticed that there are no questions in the chat box. Um, we have a bunch of very smart people in the audience, I see. Uh, there are bound to be a few questions. I have one simple question, Charlie. Um, in the um, Rogers Lake area, that you were talking about just recently, what sample size were you actually using or taking? For the soils? For the soils. Yeah, the soils are like a small uh, craft bag. So they're probably about, um, I would say a um, thousand gram, 1500 gram samples. So a standard soil sample of the B horizon. And just a quick follow up to that. Is there any um, drilling done in that area at all? I'm thinking yep. of geological control. No, that's that's the incredible thing about it. So there's just, uh, you know, um, I would say for the whole property, you know, ballpark, there's like 15 or 20 holes. Most of these holes are down near the coast. Um, there's really nothing that's been done through here in that regard at all. Um, what we have is a lot of um, government mapping that was done um, a number of years ago. We have a lot of outcrop, but no, there's there's no drilling at all. Thank you, Charlie. There's one question uh, question about whether the presentation will be available. Yes, uh, it is being recorded and um, a copy of that recording will be put on our website uh, down the road, along with uh, the other sessions that have been carried out over the last several months. Any other questions? I think you're off the hook, Charlie. Right on. Well, thank you again very much and um, have, have a great rest of the week, everyone. Uh, uh, just a quick reminder, um, we have no other sessions planned for this uh, current year. We have a few ideas that haven't been put together as yet, but I just want to remind you that um, the CIM New Brunswick um, branch is heavily involved in the upcoming EMP that is happening in October 24-26 and we look forward to actually meeting you in person at the uh, at the EMP so uh, registration is now open so uh, don't forget to register so I think that is it for us today thank you very much for uh, attending uh, all of the sessions and um, we look forward to seeing you again in the future and enjoy your summer. Thank you. Bye-bye.